Good morning. It's October 21st, and this is your Daily Brief in Science. Here's everything you need to know. A new COVID variant named XEC has emerged in Germany, raising questions about its impact and symptoms. This variant presents a different set of symptoms compared to previous strains, with common indicators including high temperature, aches, tiredness, cough, and sore throat. The XEC variant is a recombination of two sublines, KS.1.1 and KP.3.3. While it appears to be more transmissible, health authorities do not currently classify it as a public health threat. Preliminary assessments from the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control indicate that the public health risk from XEC is considered low. Current guidance from the NHS advises anyone who tests positive for COVID-19 to avoid contact with others for at least five days. Although self-isolation is no longer legally required in the UK, individuals are encouraged to minimize contact with vulnerable populations for 10 days following a positive test. Experts stress the importance of staying up to date with vaccinations and booster shots to mitigate the risk of severe illness from this new strain. The NHS is offering autumn COVID boosters to vulnerable groups, including those over 65 and frontline workers, from October 3rd to December 20th. The XEC variant, first reported in Germany during the summer, is derived from the Omicron variant and has been linked to a rise in respiratory illnesses. Notably, Francois Ballou from University College London highlighted that XEC has a slight transmission advantage over other circulating variants. And both the Robert Koch Institute and the World Health Organization have noted that XEC is not associated with severe disease outcomes. Researchers at the University of Colorado Boulder have unveiled a handheld blood test that promises to deliver precise results in under an hour with just a simple finger prick. This innovative tool leverages biophotonics technology alongside a nanostructured metasurface chip to detect heart attack biomarkers, even at low concentrations. The testing process employs sound waves to isolate microscopic biomarkers from blood samples, which are subsequently analyzed with lasers for accurate readings. Remarkably, the entire testing process takes less than 70 minutes, aiming to provide fast and reliable diagnostic results. Lead author Peng Zheng highlighted the critical role of early diagnosis in enhancing patient outcomes during heart attacks, noting that immediate medical intervention can significantly improve survival rates. This technology is designed to democratize access to heart attack diagnostics, making it feasible in remote or underserved areas lacking advanced medical facilities. Intended for use by physicians and first responders, there is potential for this test to be adapted for home use, increasing accessibility for patients. Heart attacks impact over 800,000 individuals annually in the United States, making timely diagnosis essential yet often challenging due to the variability of symptoms. Although the study serves as a proof of concept, further research is required before the device can be implemented across medical settings. In contrast to previous claims from companies like Theranos, this device is grounded in systematic experiments and peer-reviewed research, ensuring its reliability. Lead researcher Cooper Tome remarked that while past claims were unachievable, their work signifies a substantial advancement toward accurate blood testing. The study detailing this breakthrough was published in the journal Advanced Science and was funded by the National Institute of General Medical Sciences. A new study presented at the Anesthesiology 2024 annual meeting reveals that a routine blood test could predict the risk of preeclampsia in women entering labor. Researchers found that by measuring the fibrinogen to albumin ratio, or FAR, during standard blood tests, healthcare providers can assess a woman's risk of developing this serious pregnancy complication upon hospital admission. Women with an elevated FAR may face an increased risk of up to 41% for developing preeclampsia. This condition affects between 5% and 10% of pregnant women and can lead to severe complications including premature birth, organ damage, and heightened risks for both the mother and child. Fibrinogen is essential for blood clotting and inflammation, while albumin plays a role in maintaining fluid balance and transporting vital substances in the body. Higher levels of FAR indicate increased inflammation and potential health issues, with specific risk thresholds identified in the study. 
Lead researcher Lucy Shang, a medical student at the Icon School of Medicine, emphasized FAR's potential as a valuable predictive tool for healthcare providers. She pointed out that it is especially important for high-risk groups such as black women, who are 60% more likely to develop preeclampsia than white women and face higher risks of severe health outcomes. Obstetricians can implement preventive measures for women identified at risk based on FAR and other clinical indicators, including age and pre-existing conditions. These precautionary measures may involve more frequent blood pressure monitoring and early pain management. Further research is needed to establish normal FAR ranges and enhance routine prenatal care for the early detection of preeclampsia. A groundbreaking development in the fight against Alzheimer's disease has emerged with the introduction of a novel deep learning model named IAD. This innovative tool is designed to identify early onset Alzheimer's disease and mild cognitive impairment by analyzing optical coherence tomography and geography images. Recent advancements in artificial intelligence and deep learning have significantly enhanced the ability to analyze ocular imaging for the detection of Alzheimer's. IAD has shown superior performance compared to existing methods, achieving an impressive area under the curve of 0.9355 for early-onset Alzheimer's detection across both internal and external datasets. The model's findings reveal that retinal changes associated with early-onset Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment predominantly impact the deep vascular complex. This suggests that the deep vascular complex could serve as a sensitive biomarker for early detection of these conditions. Validation studies utilizing three public datasets demonstrated high accuracy in the model, indicated by strong dice coefficients for optic disc and optic cup segmentation. Notably, IAD significantly reduces computational complexity and inference time, processing images in approximately 24 milliseconds each. By leveraging the unique characteristics of OCTA data, IAD enhances the detection accuracy of retinal changes linked to neurodegeneration. The study highlights the potential of OCTA imaging in diagnosing dementia more efficiently than traditional methods. Clinical studies have confirmed significant alterations in retinal vasculature among Alzheimer's patients, which can be detected through ophthalmic imaging techniques. The retina, being an accessible part of the body, serves as a crucial window for studying early neurodegeneration and associated microvascular changes related to dementia. IAD not only provides valuable insights into the impact of dementia on retinal structures, but also facilitates rapid screening in larger populations. At the recent 128th Annual American Academy of Ophthalmology meeting, New data was shared regarding AI-based home optical coherence tomography, further emphasizing its potential compared to standard in-office scans. A recent study published in Molecular Psychiatry has revealed significant findings regarding high-potency cannabis and its effects on DNA patterns, particularly among individuals with a history of psychosis. The research indicates that regular use of cannabis with THC concentrations of 10% or more leads to notable changes in genes associated with mitochondrial and immune functions, specifically highlighting the CAVIN-1 gene. Conducted by the Genetic and Psychosis Study Team in South London, alongside the EUGEI study, this research was funded by the Medical Research Council and the NIHR Maudsley and Exeter Biomedical Research Centers. The study involved 239 participants who had experienced their first psychotic episode, alongside 443 healthy volunteers from the UK, France, and Spain. Among these participants, 38% reported using cannabis more than once a week, primarily high-potency varieties. Researchers focused on DNA methylation in blood samples from a total of 682 participants, including those with first-episode psychosis and healthy controls. Senior author Professor Marta DeForti emphasized the importance of understanding the biological effects of cannabis, especially concerning mental health. The average age of first cannabis use among participants was 16 years, with many consuming high-potency cannabis frequently. The study found that daily users of high-potency cannabis are five times more likely to develop psychosis compared to non-users, with symptoms including hallucinations and paranoia. Notably, the findings were distinct from the effects of tobacco, 
which many cannabis users often mix with their cannabis. This research illustrates how external factors such as drug use can influence gene function, highlighting the need for effective prevention strategies for psychotic disorders, especially amid the rising prevalence of high-potency cannabis use. This has been your Daily Brief in Science. To read more about these stories, follow the links in the episode bio. You can also subscribe to these updates via email at www.brief.news. For more daily podcasts about the topics you love, visit brief.news forward slash podcasts. Tune in tomorrow. We'll be back with everything you need to know.